Joey Burrow, looks like Ben Stiller and Dodgeball. We'll get into that. And Extension Watch 2022 for the AFC stud. Lots of news, some notes, lots of fun with some great guests. That's right. Chandler Parsons, Rob Gronkowski, and Lacrosse God, Paul Rabel, all here to talk about their new movie, Magic Mike 5. Oh, I know Gronk was in the Bahamas. Chandler Parsons is here, guys, to kick off the show with us. Austin Reevesy, who I thought was going to teen wolf himself into the first basket. Didn't mm. happen. You did the overachiever thing. I, we just asked you a simple question, Chandler. Who's going to hit the uh, basket? And then you said. I got lucky because, like you said, Anthony Davis, I knew was going to win the tip. Seven foot. He's longer than Jokic. He can jump higher than Jokic. That was an easy one. Reeves missed a shot that allowed LeBron to get to the basket, and then it just turned out it looked really, really smart. But it was just a guess. It was a boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, it was impressive you. though. I liked it. And I like this. I like that bet, by the way, because you know I suck at parlays. We all know that. Blah blah. blah. I don't want to hear it. But I will say, with this first basket thing, it's like set it and forget it. I caught a little bit of something called an NBA draft lottery. That was a wild experience. And then we got that seven foot five yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, most lottery shows aren't that exciting. This yeah. kid is the next big thing. And, and he so was in Paris, I understood. I was more excited to watch that than the actual game last night. Because this kid, say that. I know, but this kid's a freak of nature. We've never seen anything like him. What's so special? What do I need to know? He's seven foot six. He can do everything guards in the NBA can do. He's long, he defends, he blocks shots, he can score, and he's been playing in this French league with grown men. So I think people argue with LeBron or him, the greatest prospect. LeBron, at the end of the day, he was great. He was fantastic. He was playing against high school kids in Ohio most and, the, and, and nationwide. This kid's been playing against professional adults for three or four years now. So it's, it's just a different vibe. He's been playing pro. Who does he remind you of? Is it LeBron? No, because he's thin, right? LeBron's a freak athlete. He's more like a Kevin Durant where he's wiry, he's long. Um, <laughs> what is happening in the studio? Yeah, but why not. is there so much chatter? Does this happen during your show? It doesn't. That's what happens. I love. This. I love when you guys are in studio, but what a what an absolute mess when you guys come in here between the shows. Oh, it's look, insane. At, look at what's going on behind. Yeah, it's, people uh, are like what people are screaming, people are yelling, we're having conversations <laughs> about their fantasy basketball teams. What's yeah, going exactly. on here? All right, talk to me about the game. Let's focus on this. Sorry, if we can just shh. Quiet on set. Show is happening here. Sorry, guys. Um, I want to talk about the Nuggets because they crushed it. Historic performance. It was beautiful. It was brilliant. It was just their night. People were saying, what do the Lakers need to do? Like, are we worried about uh, them? Yeah, I'm extremely worried. I predicted that the Nuggets would win this series in five. And everyone was talking about last night how they didn't give up. They came back from down 21. But at the end of the day, they were dominated all game long. And Jokic, I said that this his first three quarters was some of the most impressive three quarters of basketball I've ever seen. The way he was passing, the way he was rebounding. The guy had a triple-double midway through the third quarter. It's it's The Lakers can't trade baskets with them. They're too good offensively. And we talked about it. Where the Lakers had the number one defense. The, the Nuggets had the number one offense. Which one's going to work better? And clearly it was the Nuggets well, offense. Chandler, how are we slowing him down? For the yeah, Lakers? it's tough because they don't really have size besides Anthony Davis. They got to go small. They went with Rui Hachimura, which is a real name of a person on the okay. Lakers. They got to get that seven foot five. They, yeah, uh, they're not in those sweepstakes. Team. But oh. yeah, they got to get back in transition. They got to slow him down. I would probably double team him. But then again, they have good shooters around him. So they, they present a real challenge. You are doing, you live the best life. I, I, you have a beautiful tan. Thank like you. Gore, it's, it's the most even t it's the most Thank you. even tan I've ever seen in my entire life. Really? Yes. I'm wow. very jealous of it. I give you a lot of uh, credit for it. But uh, you're in Cabo. You're here. You're in the Bahamas. You're on some celebrity golf tournament tour of dreams. Yeah, this one this one hit home for me. This was different because this was I was a baseball player before basketball, and yes. these were all like 90s legends. Who we baseball. got? It was King Griffey Jr. You had the crime dog, Fred McGriff, <laughs> Cliff <laughs> Floyd, Andrew Jones, Jorge. Hey, Posada. Obviously, this was Derek Jeter's tournament. It was a beautiful event. So much fun. Jorge like, Posada loves to vacation. Oh, who does? Let me tell you, you. I mean, you clearly do. But so uh, this was just this. Chris Tucker was there. Your boy Gronk was there. We'll have him on the show here in a minute. Yeah. He was. There was an auction. It was his birthday. He was the auctioneer. Oh, shut up. And ask him about the, one of the one of the things was a, a round of golf at Shinnecock. And let's just say he didn't pronounce Shinnecock <laughs> correctly. <laughs> was that on purpose? That's a well done job. I yeah, coordinated that to happen. It was that bit. shiny cock, may have been said. <laughs> oh my god! 
God. Yeah. Yesterday we had somebody <laughs> drop the F bomb, and now you just. <laughs> yeah, well, he, his words. <laughs> Why not... is my show where everybody comes to like hang out backstage and talk during the entire thing? My earpiece can't get in my ear. What is going on it, on this His program words, today? not mine. I'm just, I'm just. Matt, can I get the same respect Run It Back and Beetle gets on this thing? Like, yeah. I just need to. We and Beetle need to sit down and hash this out. How's the show going? Tell us before you go. I know you have to get out of here. Yeah. And head to college. Uh, Run It Back is amazing in studio and on Zoom, but like, what a time. It's awesome. It's such a good cast. Michelle is such a great host and Shams gets all the scoops. Eddie has all his intel. So it's we really we just vibe out there and everyone knows the game. Everyone watches. Everyone has their own spin on things and their own takes. And it's, we've really gotten along. It's become this little family that we have. So hopefully we do it for a long time. I love it. We love running back. We love having you on the show. I'm not going to waste, you know, 10 minutes of your time talking about John Morant. So go, go, be good. Oh, we need a pick. They want, they want to pick. Oh yeah, sit down, boy wonder genius. Mm, mm. Listen. As hard it was as it was to pick the uh, the greatest player of all time to hit the first basket, what a crazy dark horse Oof, that was yeah. for LeBron. What do you got for tonight? Or give me a little something. tonight. I got. I don't know who's starting for the Celtics. If I don't know, because it changes the jump ball. Okay, so I like Bam. That's something that's Googleable. I like Bam winning the tip. And I like Bam scoring the first basket. I think for them to Why? win, he's got to get going. They don't really have a big to guard him. He's agile. He's versatile. I like them trying to get him going early. Don't, don't come in here and give us the, the yeah, exhaust. If this happens the again, I, may, I need a raise. I mean, if he's this like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I just yeah. said this for an just hour. Boom, boom, I'll boom. Back. It's clockwork. You're the best. Uh, I will ask Gronk about shiny things. Yes. <laughs> God, Do that, please. Damn it. All right. We'll see you <laughs> right, in a I'm little bit. Here. We appreciate you. Chandler Parsons is here. Uh, another tall drink of water. Rob Gronkowski is on the show. And then this Paul Rabel guy, this lacrosse gentleman, face of lacrosse, the god, the LeBron of, I thought I was walking into uh, a Marvel movie or like Days of Our Lives or something, this Paul Rabel. My goodness. All right, let's get to it. The Bengals. Um, just speaking of studs, studs and studs and studs on the show, but let's talk about Joe Burrow. They had their mini camp yesterday, and Joe Burrow stepped to the podium, as he always does, sort of understated. He had that stupid headband on that everyone's talking about. I'm not focused on the headband. I'm focused on his extension, because Jalen got his. Uh, Lamar got his, and now it leaves Burrow as next in line. So after a bunch of questions about, yep, yeah, the dodgeball look and all, I mean, and it's a good look. It really, we, we like it. Uh, and I think Jamar Chase was talking about how they do like UFC moves together. I'm getting two thumbs up from Marissa on the look. Okay, great. Uh, I mean, he could be in our show lineup, just barely, but he could be in our show lineup for today because <laughs> there's a standard clearly that has been set by FanDuel TV. Uh, but he was asked about how negotiations are going. He didn't say very much but uh, he did say that he doesn't want things to play out in the media, which I love. And he gave some insight into what's important in here. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, whenever you have guys on the team that, that need to be paid, that's always on your mind. You want that to, to be a focal point, and so we're, we're working to, to make that happen. Yeah, you got to have good players. You know, you can't, you see, I mean, it doesn't matter how good, good your quarterback is. If you don't have good players around him, you're not going to be a very good team. Do I like that haircut? It reminds me of, you do? It is so fourth grade, it hurts me. It is, I'm picturing, it's Sean Hunter! It's Sean Hunter from Boy Meets World. Ooh. Can I see that again? I, I wasn't listening to the clip, I was watching the hair. Let me see it again. Can I hear the clip again? Do we have it where you're at? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, whenever you have guys on the team that, that need to be paid, that's always on your mind. You want that to, to be a focal point, and so we're we're working to, to make that happen. Yeah, you got to have good players. You, know, you can't. You see, I mean, it doesn't matter how good good your quarterback is if you don't have good players around him. And you're not going to be a very good team. Okay, listen to what he said, <laughs> and it, it, is, it remains to be seen exactly how Burrow's going to factor those teammates that he's talking about into the said negotiations, whether it's by backloading the deal or if he's actually willing to sacrifice a few dollars. He just reminds me of Tom Brady. He just reminds me of how he talks. Even if he says, he didn't really say anything there, but we're like, oh, every word we're like latching onto and it's meaningful. Uh, and when he's talking about these teammates, these are guys who, some of them who've been with him for a long time, like the Jamar Chases of the world, um, and his other teammates like T. Higgins, Logan Wilson, 
Other really key members of the core of what makes this team this team, they're all due extension soon. So it has to be encouraging for Bengals fans to hear that Joe's at least considering other key pieces on this team and keeping things sort of in perspective uh, as he is approaching this new deal. And speaking of keeping things in perspective, let's give some love to Joe. It is Mental Health Awareness Month here on the show. Lots of good going on in the league. And uh, we would like, I wish we had a longer show or we need to make it more of a point to highlight it because really a lot of NFL players, teams and owners are doing great stuff. But Burrow and his dad, Jimmy, who I have a lot of respect for and I've gotten to know a bit over the past couple of years, they took care of the bill for mental health treatment of 20 families in Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Uh, the foundation, his foundation, Joe Burrow Foundation, uh, they were supposed to pay for a few, right? And they literally could not narrow it down. So they just decided to take the bill and pick up the tab for everyone, which is something that we absolutely love to see and support. Um, maybe we'll have Hamilton on next. Maybe we'll, I don't know if Hamilton makes the cut, honestly, with, with, the, with those shirts from his mom. I don't think, Paul Rabel, Chandler Parsons with that even tan. Did you hear what the word he said on this set to my face? What is happening on this program? Fresh up a trip from the Bahamas where they all went bananas. Gronk, Parsons, Rabel next. He's a four-time Super Bowl champion, our FanDuel family member, and most importantly, uh, the best darn dog dad out there. A pretty good son who got beat by a green plastic spoon and an auctioneer at golf tournaments for celebrities, apparently. Hey, Rob. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I see. That's me. I like <laughs> I see. I mean, I like your background. Where are you? Uh, I'm in an undisclosed oh. location. Got it. Got it. Now, you were in the Bahamas because Chandler Parsons completely just told us everything that happened. What is that golf course called that's in Long Island? All right. I I'm, I'm, mean, I know he told you about that. I was up on the stage doing the silent auction, yeah. and there's a golf item that's being auctioned off, and... Uh, it's in the West Hamptons, I'm pretty sure, and uh, it's called Shinnecock, oh. all right? Shinnecock, hey? Okay? Okay. It's not Shinnecock, all right? It's Shinnecock. What? I know Chandler pronounced it wrong um, a couple minutes ago, but it's Shinnecock. What did Can you, you tell Chandler that? I will. I will. Chandler, Chandler, Chandler's already in Cabo. Are you joking? Chandler, like, jumped out of here, and he's halfway to Cabo. Uh, how did you pronounce it on stage in front of Ken Griffey Jr., uh, McGruff, uh, Jeter, all of them? How did you pronounce it? I pronounce it Shinkak, but oh, I really bad. thought it was Shinkak. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Oh, he said and someone else wanted, Yeah, yeah, no. Then someone else thought it. They were. They thought it was funny that I said Shinkak because everyone knew it was Shinnecock, and I didn't know that. <laughs> so I thought it was really Shinkak. I thought I was right on, spot on. And then someone yelled out again, "What's the name of it, Rob? What's the name of the golf course? I, oh, I forgot." Man. And then I. And then I mean, I've, we were all there. We were all there for a good time. I so know. then I, I came up with a new name right in my head and. The new name was Shiny Cock. And uh, I had the whole place erupted. The whole place was just in tears. And that was my moment <laughs> that I became a stand up comedian. So you're, oh, wow. Tom Brady will be that taking notes from you. Thing. My two minutes, Kay. It was great. <laughs> you know, every moment. Uh, I don't even know how to spot, I don't even, like, the FCC is going to shut this show down in about 10 minutes. We have F-bombs, and we're dropping the C-word like it's nothing. This isn't HBO, Rob. But let's look at well, this that's photo. the name of a golf course, so we're no, fine. No, true. You're right. That's fair. But let's bend the rules a little bit. Uh, you, let's take a look at this photo. Okay, Chandler Parsons showed me this. He's, like, buddy-buddy with Jeter. Who are you excited to hang out with in this crew? Um, I was excited to hang out with everyone. It was just so cool because everyone was super cool. But uh, to have all the entourage guys there, how they're all friends, and then they all came to the golf tournament together, that was really cool. Also, um, Chris Tucker, um, unbelievable comedian. <laughs> Love seeing, loved seeing him as well. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr., I mean, he was my favorite growing up. Yeah. Uh, the, the lefty, his baseball swing, just sitting there back in the box. Uh, just loved him so much. Just He was one of my heroes growing up. And same with my friends. I was with a couple of my high school friends. And it was just so cool to be at that uh, Derek Jeter Invitational because every single athlete that was there w were our heroes growing up because they're all like 10, 15 years older than me at that event. So they, when we were 12 years old playing Little League Baseball, those were the guys we looked up to. So it was just so cool to be at the event and meet them all. 
And as we learned from your mom, you grew up liking baseball, even over football. You guys were a baseball house, so I can't imagine how cool that must have been and to celebrate your birthday in that company with your boys and some of these absolute legends. That must have been so awesome. And you've had all these experiences, and you know, I'll, I'll never have them. I'll never know what it's like to you know, ding and dent a Lombardi trophy or win four Super Bowls or hang out with Tom Brady or like have a romantic spicy love scene with Jane Fonda or how to hug a flamingo. I've always wanted to think, no, what does it feel like, Rob, to hug a flamingo? You know, uh, it was a little weird because <laughs> like but why? the leg why? Hit you. Because, why? Because you're just hugging like, it's kind of like hugging like a little, a ball that's in the middle of the air because it's like, it was the ball was floating in the air because they have these skinny, tiny legs that are holding up its whole entire body. And uh, let me tell you, it was like, it was weird trying to get a grip. And then like, you don't want to squeeze too hard either because you just weren't sure how how fragile they were, but I needed a firm grip so it stayed still. But uh, I was a little nervous, but those flamingos are very friendly. Uh, they have them all throughout um, Baja Mar. They have a little, actually not all throughout, but they have a little section for them. They have about 15 flamingos where you can go up, you can hang out with them, you can feed them, you can pet them. It's super cool. I love that Baja Mar shout out to them. A new sponsorship deal coming for the Gronkster. I was asking you why not why you were hugging a flamingo, not why it felt like a pocket of air. You're so hilarious, Gronk. Oh. I can't even deal with you. Oh, why I was hugging it because <laughs> uh, because they gave me uh, me and my friends a free room, and they said uh, for the free room, can you take a picture with the flamingo? And I told them I really like pink pink flamingos, so <laughs> I said them 100, and they said we're gonna post it then. And I said, hey, for a free room for me and my boys, paid vacation, I'm in. I'm taking that picture for us, baby. Let's I'm go. So my dog had a free dinner on it as well. I, I mean, Gronk, you need it. You know, I'm just I'm just glad somebody out there is taking care of Rob Gronkowski. Just, yes. you know, throwing, chucking free stuff, stuff comp stuff his way left yeah. and right. They um, call me Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> Rob Kompkowski, I'm dead. <laughs> I love it. You're very smart with your money. I want to get into that at some point in the off season. Just like you're very good financially. I don't know that about you, but I feel like I really know that about you. So you want to dig into that. But I do want to, uh, I mean, Tom's not in this photo. It's all the goats, all the legends. Why no Tom? Because he's not a goat no more. <gasps> Guy hasn't been on the scene anymore. God. We don't know where he is, so... <laughs> Rob, he's by. Is he? Why the Raiders? There's a, uh, there's interest. He's minority. Blah 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 blah. Not gonna mess with his Fox deal. We get it. We get it. But wh why are, are why why do you think the Raiders? Why is that interesting to him? You think? I mean, that was really shocking to me. I don't know anything about it at all. I mean, I'm not even sure if it went down. It could have been just a total rumor as well. But uh, like I said, it was shocking. But I, it's not shocking to me that you know Tom wants to get into an ownership. Uh, that that's that makes a lot of sense, you know, that move if he does do that. But um, it was it was kind of shocking that it was the Raiders out of out of everyone. If you could invest in an NFL franchise and you can and I wonder if you ever thought about it, which NFL team do you think you'd sort of give an eye to first? It would be the team that's going to be overseas in a couple of years. That's my prediction. That's the team I would want to invest in. Which team? Oh, they would be called the uh, Amsterdam Wilds. Wilds, the Amsterdam Wilds, owned by Rob Kompkowski, everybody. Yeah. Everything in the red light district for free for everybody. Free hotel rooms. Uh, what about, okay, let, okay, let's keep this going. Pick, pick a food chain. If you had to invest in a food chain, who are you going with? Oh, uh, in and out in and out over Duncan. Hate their fries, Rob. Uh, you got to get them animal style. Animal style fries. Ooh. All the sauce. Some of us don't have Diane's jeans, and uh, I, I would, I would probably like need to go on a treadmill for twenty minutes after that. Uh, okay, got it. Let's move on to some other things. What are your thoughts on this? Is there a bit of a disconnect in Vegas between Jimmy G and Devonte and company? I mean, there must be a little disconnect. I mean, I wouldn't say it's with the quarterback. I would say, I would just say it's kind of more with the front office. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what they promised him or told him from the very beginning, but there definitely does seem a disconnect. And uh, I would probably say he was expected expecting to be with um, Derek Carr throughout his career there because that was his buddy and his friend, and they were on the same page, uh, the same chemistry they had. They actually did great together. I mean, 
Devontae had another Pro Bowl season for his team All-Pro, and uh, he absolutely dominated all over. It didn't really matter who his quarterback was. And then once Derek Carr left, he was probably hoping to get Aaron Rodgers as a Raider, and uh, and that that didn't fall through. But uh, I'm not really sure what his disconnect is about. If he's really mad that Jimmy G is there, I'm sure he's going to go in, and he's going to be a great co- quarterback. He already knows the system. He knows um, how Josh McDaniels works. He's already worked under – under McDaniels um, in New England and did a great job when he started the few games that he did over in New England. So I don't really see why he should have a problem with the quarterback position. Uh, it just must be something with the front office that yeah. is disconnected between Devontae Adams um, and the front office. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Tell me a little bit more because, you know, I mean, you know those guys. So Josh McDaniels, you know Jimmy Garoppolo. You spent a lot of time with him up in New England. Like, is he the right fit for that McDaniels offense, which of course they 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 hang their cool with a guy like Devontae leading the wide receivers? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think it's a great fit, especially for the money that they got him. It's not like they're paying him top dollar. So then you can put product around him like Devontae Adams, yeah. um, and they brought in the tight end Michael Mayer from Notre Dame from the second round pick. I think he's a great addition to that offense as well. And then they got the running back as well. So they just need a quarterback, I would say, that knows how to run the system. Um, you know, they don't need a, a first team all pro quarterback. They just need a guy that knows how to operate. And um, that's what Jimmy G can do. He knows how to operate. He'll get the ball down the field and he'll do what the coaches tell him to do. So um, he's going to put the ball, also place the ball in the hands of Devontae Adams as much as possible. So I think it's a good fit, especially for the money that they got him for compared to what these other quarterbacks are getting paid. Did you hear uh, Burrow, great answer. Did you you hear Burrow uh, about his contract extension? Uh, I just heard a little bit that he's always going to be, I just saw one little quote that he's always going to be in Super Bowl contention. And um, I couldn't agree. I mean, I 100% agree with that, that he will always be in Super Bowl contention uh, from here on out. Um, I think that they should probably make the playoffs. They should. I don't see why not every time that he's the starter every single year from here on out. Um, Joey B as as the quarterback. So uh, I can I don't really know what else he said about the contract extension. Can you please elaborate yeah. more, Kay? Yes, I can, Mr. Rob Komkowski. Let's take a look because he's you know Lamar gets paid, Jalen breaks the bank and makes history, and now he's just next in line. So what is the market going to be for him? So he was asked about it after practice, and it just really gives me it gives me Brady vibes. Take a listen to this. Yeah, you got to have good players. You, know, you can't. You see, I mean, it doesn't matter how good good your quarterback is if you don't have good players around him. And, you're not going to be a very good team. So he's basically saying he's going to take his teammates into account when it comes to negotiating his contract. Now, not Gronk the player, but the Gronk the guy who's left the league now, understands money, understands how the business works. Would you advise him to sort of do what Brady did for so many years, of course, and take his teammates into consideration when negotiating his contract? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I, I believe that will you know, set him up to be in the Super Bowl contention every single year. And uh, he reminded me um, of Brady when he was coming out of LSU, just the way that he sits back in the pocket and just reads the offense and just delivers it flawlessly uh, to wherever he needs to deliver the football. But also with the contract now, um, he's already thinking, you know, he wants good players around him. He wants good teammates around him. And that's a great thing. I mean, what's the difference? If you're you're a quarterback, you're in this day and era and you're you're in this market, and uh, you have a good teammates around you. You're, you're building your legacy. You're going to be in Super Bowl contention, possibly win a Super Bowl, uh, you know, on your resume soon. And then you take a quarterback friendly deal. I mean, what's the difference between 40, 47, 48 million or 53, 54 million when the next highest guy on your team is only getting paid in the 20s? You're yeah. already that much. Uh, uh, you, there's already that big of a difference between your pay and the next guy pay on your team. So who cares? I mean, if you want a team around you, take freaking a couple million dollars less, which is, I don't know, nothing in the grand scheme for a quarterback. So I'm waiting for a quarterback to do that, uh, like kind of go down the Brady route. Uh, not as much as the Brady route. I mean, he was he was taking like half. He was taking freaking fifty percent discounts, which was which we don't even get at the pro shop in New England. But Tom was taking. <laughs> We only got 30% discount at the pro shop there. (laughs) So I want to see it happen, but just not to that degree. Just a a little team family deal. Just a couple million. I think people are out there like, no, because that's the thing. Like, get paid. Get your money. It's a business. They use you. You're putting your body out there. Your career is really short. You're setting yourself up for life. Brady had Giselle. Like, that's the argument to not do it. Yeah, well, 
Joey B. It has Joey B. He's got the whole, whole state of Ohio. And uh, I'm sure if he takes a, a friendly deal too, tell him to throw in the, the private plane a couple times, you know, when he has to go <laughs> there. He has to go there. That doesn't count versus the salary cap. Yeah. I, I like that. And then he can hang out with you and pick up your tips on how to get free rooms and let us hug. He should just hug every flamingo that's around, and then he'll be good. He can uh, take he a team discount. He hugs 10 flamingos. He has 10 free rooms. <laughs> he has 10 free suites out of there. 10 houses. Uh, okay, we have a new sheriff in town. Baker Mayfield, Kyle Trask. I was talking to their running back. No Fournette down there where you won your fourth Super Bowl. Uh, it's Rashad White as the running back, and he was talking to me yesterday about these two quarterbacks. we got our first image. There's Kyle Trask, of course, you know. And then Baker, I don't know if you know him. Uh, what do you When you see that picture and he's wearing the creamsicle, what do you think? The creamsicle always throws, always throws you off. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like ugly, but it's not ugly. Like, you know, you know how that creamsicle works. Like, it's like... It's it throws you off. It's it's old school. But uh, there's Baker right there. I think Baker will win the quarterback position. I think he'll be the starting quarterback for the Tampa Bay Bucks going into the season. Um, the only way I can see him that the Bucks pulling him is if he just absolutely plays horrendous, which I don't think he will. I think the Bucks are going to put him in a position to succeed. There will be competition between him and Kyle. Um, during the training camp, which that they want. They need Kyle to have that competition to bring the best out of him. I mean, he knew he wasn't going to play behind Tom. So sometimes you can relax when you know you're in that position. But this is the time to compete for a starting job for both of them. I believe Baker will win it in the end. He'll be put in the position to succeed. To succeed. He's got great teammates around him. Chris, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans yeah. leading them at receiver. They got a great defense around him. So I would just say Baker just needs to be – you know, the baker that he was when he was with the Rams, and he just doesn't need to be a hero. He just protect the ball and don't turn it over, and he will succeed, and the Tampa Bay Bucks will be going to the playoffs. Damn, you're on fire today, Gronk. We love it. That was a lot of hard work, so let's have some fun. We asked Twitter to ask Gronk anything. Yep, an A-G-A. And there were some wild questions. We sorted through them. We will not say the C word again. But here's some tweets from your one, some of your biggest fans here. Uh, would you rather fight one Julian Edelman-sized duck or 100 duck-sized Julian Edelmans? Now, compare a duck to a flamingo, and I'd like to hear your answer. Yes, yes. Well, I'm going to go with one Julian-sized duck because it doesn't matter the size that Julian is. He's giving it all. He's a pit bull. It doesn't matter. He, but It's not the size of the dog. It's the, well, how's that one, one saying go? It's not the size of the dog. It's the size of the heart in the dog or the fight in the dog. And that's what Julian is. It doesn't matter if he was born a foot big or if he was born 10 feet big. He's giving it all and he's not giving up until he gets squashed. So one, I would rather face one of them than 100 of Julian duck size. I don't really understand the question, but I like everything. You're just such a good, like you're such a for the boys, like. I don't even know what I said. Neither did I, but it was good. You literally, you just, Julian's, Julian's somewhere in, so, somewhere in LA getting I, his coffee, like, thanks, Gronk, thanks. But yeah, i put it this, yeah, it was a great compliment, but just put it this way. The final answer, I would only fight, I would only want to fight one Julian Edelman duck size. There we go. <laughs> That's easy. That's all. That's Grunk, all we need. Grunk, Grunk, the question was, would you rather fight one duck that is the size of Julian Edelman, oh, Julian so 5'10", a duck, yeah, though, not Julian Edelman, I would, or... that duck. <laughs> I would only fight that duck, just one of them. Not 100 Julians. That's, that's vicious. Even though they... <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like that scene in Jurassic Park where all the little dinosaurs come and just like take yeah. down the guy. Yeah, that's not fun. In one second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Smart, 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 smart. Yeah. Um, that, that's exactly what I was thinking of. That scene right there. Okay, Kurt Fairburn says on Twitter, who's the most famous person that left you speechless when you met him or her? Uh, wow. Good question right there. <laughs> uh, I would say... Uh, Vince Vaughn, I just met him real quick. Like, it wasn't even like really a meet. He said like, what up Gronk? And then I was like, yo, what up Vince? And that this was at uh, NFL Honors like eight years ago. And right after he said, what's up Gronk? I, I walked away with my friends like, yeah, Vince Vaughn. So what up? Like, I thought I was so cool. And yeah. I was speechless. I didn't know what to say back. I just thought I was cool. You've been around Tom Brady, Jane Fonda. You've been, you were just with like uh, Ken Griffey and Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn's the one. 
All right. I mean, it was like right when I watched like five of his movies. He was in the prime of all his movies. He just really them all and I was watching them all and then he just all of a sudden just walked by and I was like, whoa. Whoa, whoa. great answer. Okay, uh, somebody wants to know why you don't have a mustache. Why no mustache, Gronk? Well, I am called Bobby Whiskers. That's my nickname actually because I, I kind of do grow a little bit, but they're all over the place. So I, I'm called Whiskers and that it takes a while to grow a mustache. Now that's a serious mustache yeah. right there. I can grow a mustache, but it will never look like that. It'll kind of be all, all over the place. I had one before actually. I kind of look dirty. You know, it doesn't really go with me. It, it looks it looks weird, but uh, once in a while I grow it out, but uh, maybe maybe I will do it again now. I'm I'm in, I'm re-inspired. If you had full control over it, what would you have done differently with your career? That's the last one. Uh, I would have controlled. Um, I would have started, you know, maintaining my health better. You know, when you're young, 20s, you just think you're invincible and nothing's going to stop you, and that you can do anything, and you're going to heal right away, and you're going to be ready to go the next day. So, um, I would have definitely have started taking my, care of my body from the beginning of my NFL career um, instead of waiting until about 25, 26 years old. It's a great honest answer. Now we have Paul Rabel uh, on. He's like the LeBron of lacrosse on the show. Uh, he is the founder, co-founder of Premier Lacrosse League. Did you know that Belichick brought in another lacrosse, like a Chris Hogan-y kind of guy to try out for camp? Why is Belichick, before you go, why is he obsessed with these lacrosse players? Uh, because Belichick loves lacrosse. He always talks about lacrosse when you're in the building with him throughout the whole season. He brings it up a few times, but uh, he's a lacrosse guy, loves his lacrosse players, uh, loves the toughness of the game. Uh, Coach Belichick loves that about football and also loves that about lacrosse. He he lives for, I feel like as a coach, just a tough SOB. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's what he's looking for in this lacrosse player. And hopefully, yeah, he's probably hoping he hits a home run with him for uh, for special teams, that is. Yeah, we'll see. I don't, know, I don't know if Doc's quite made the cut, but Doc's Aitken was the name of the guy who came. We have Paul Rabel here in studio. Uh, we had Chandler Parsons, Rob Gronkowski, Paul Rabel. It's a packed show today. Gronk, we appreciate you. Amazing job. Lots to think about and great perspective. And hugging a flamingo and shinna something. I'm not saying it. Not saying it, Twitter. Not saying it. It's like my favorite Gronk appearance. I loved that. Oh boy, this is, I did not think that I'd be doing this today. Our next guest is one of the greatest lacrosse players of all time. They call him the LeBron James of lacrosse. He's also the co-founder of the Premier Lacrosse League, which kicks off opening weekend Saturday, June 3rd on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Paul Rabel, congratulations on all the success. Thanks for having me. When did you start playing lacrosse? I started when I was 12. How did you, when did you know like you were seriously really good? Well, I wanted to quit when I first started because it's it's technically really difficult. Yeah. So I think we're going to find out in the next segment, perhaps. Oh, gosh. I'll put you through the ringer. I've heard, I heard I'm going to literally duct tape a pillow around myself and yeah. go in goal for you. Well, then we'll have to put something on the line. But I was talking a lot of trash on Twitter saying that it's like you're not going to get one past me. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll okay, figure okay, out some yeah, sort yeah. of friendly wager. <laughs> but I want to get into this, first of all, with the Premier Lacrosse League because it's really successful. It's always been successful. You're you know obviously a huge part of it in the face of it. 12 nationally televised games to 16 this year. Tell me about yeah. that. Well, we have a major media rights deal with ESPN and the Walt Disney Company, and our first year with them was last year. We had 12 games on linear. Now we have 16. Eight on ABC, which is incredible to That's try insane. to grow the game. I love that. Eight on ESPN, ESPN2. This is our schedule that you're looking at, so we're really excited. The games begin on June 3rd, and, and we have two games on ABC. Can I come to a I've never been to a game. 100%. I don't know anything. I, yesterday, they were trying to find a net, and I, I what did I send on the group text? I was like, I cannot believe the nets are this small. I, can, I was looking at like images of them. I just, I don't know much about it. So I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, because you're probably used to seeing soccer nets, which yeah. are massive. Why don't they have more goals in soccer? I've always wondered. I mean, I grew up playing it, but <laughs> that goal is massive. All right, we'll get Robert Lewandowski from uh, the, uh, the Premier League right. sort of teach you a thing or two. <laughs> Maybe we'll uh, do a little crossover action there. Talk to me about building the sport, because yeah. that's super fascinating to me. And you have investors like Kevin Durant. Yeah. You have WWE yeah. investing in you. How are you planning to build it further? Well, our biggest investor is Joe Tai, who's the owner of Brooklyn Nets, co-founder of Alibaba. Then we have groups like Arctos that's everywhere in sports right now. And, and Josh Harris was in the news for the Washington purchase in football. His business partner, David Blitzer, is an investor who's all over sports as well. So, I mean, we have an amazing group of owners. It's a single entity business, so they all own the league and the eight teams that we have. We started the, to build, sort of rebuild, I would guess, professional lacrosse in 2018 
because I had played in it for 10 years prior. It had, pro lacrosse had been around for 20 years, and it just wasn't cutting the mustard. Hmm. There was the, the players were getting paid. My rookie wage was 6,000 uh, bucks, probably a due for just a portion of the show. Now, if we look at just what entertainers are being paid and athletes specifically, we didn't have a distribution deal. So we were looking at what happened with UFC and MLS over the last 20 years and said, why can't lacrosse get there? So we started a new league. So you, and it's been successful and you're growing and you guys yeah. can check all, all those games on ESPN Plus and ABC uh, this fall with opening day coming up. There's a perception of lacrosse I want to talk to you about because yeah. that's some adversity too, right? There's a, how do we make it universal and sort of get over the Ivy League-ness of it all, that it's a Northeastern sport, that it's like all the Chris Longs and the Sam Hubbards and the, you know, the, the Virginia guys. Like how do we make it more widespread, I guess? Yeah, and those guys play lacrosse. So yeah. I would say the first thing, because it's hard when you're changing the brand or reputation of anything. So the first thing is understand its history so it's a Native American game it's the first game of North America it's been played for thousands of years the second thing is just like hockey or golf it's an equipment sport so it's expensive to play and that means access is just different for anyone who wants to play a game that costs a lot of money to get out of the gates that's different than soccer and basketball you know I grew up playing rec sports so the 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 barrier to enter was much lower than it is now where everyone's playing youth and then the third is really what we think about is, is storytelling. I mean, that, that's what we have the ability to do and invest in the communities to help lower that barrier and create access. But it's a, it's a long-term investment. Changing perception and changing accessibility requires money and media. Yeah, it's a good answer, and I, 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 I yeah, totally. It's why I didn't play hockey. I don't have, you know, but now to make it more accessible and to make it, it's why not why I didn't play hockey. I just can't. Where are you from? Play. Chicago. Chicago. But so I mean, I, it was just soccer. There, yeah, right. It was soccer, but it just wasn't. It was just wasn't a thing. It wasn't what? a thing I ever thought about until like college when it became like a thing that would have been available to go watch. Yeah, I mean, think about it. If we needed ice and skates to play, that, that barrier yeah. is really high. But Crazy. what the NHL has done over the last 20 years is create a much more visually accessible game, right? Because it's so celebrated. Arenas are packed and people love it. So they've actually changed hockey in North America from the professional level. And that's what we're trying to do at the PLL. We love it. All right, now the Water Dogs. Yeah, we're yeah. trying to just have the names of all the teams. That's what I was okay. asking the, my producers yesterday. We were going through all of them. The Chaos, which is like obviously where I'd, where I'd be, and that would be my team. But the Lacrosse Club won the PLL Championship last year. This made a lot of fans excited because they broke up the dynasty runs of the Whip Snakes and said Chaos that I was just talking about. So uh, how does this help when uh, an expansion team like that, the Water Dogs sort of take down what I imagine sort of your version of the Patriots Yeah, well, for a long time? Well, yeah, the, the Whip Snakes were definitely the more established team. Yeah. They have uh, basically a group that has tons of chemistry led by Jim Stagnita. And then you have our latest expansion team in the, in the Water Dogs, or I should say second to last, because when we bought MLL, which something I left out, but we might get to it, uh, which was the previous league, we merged and we added the Boston uh -huh. Cannons to our mix. They're now Cannons Lacrosse. So they're the eighth team. They're the underdogs this year. But pretty proud of the water dogs and how quickly they were able to get in the mix and win. You don't see expansion teams win as, as, as quickly as they did. Now, you just had your draft for the league, right? And so uh, I love an underdog, so I'm looking for my team. So there's okay. eight teams in this. It all kicks off um, on Saturday, June 3rd on ABC and ESPN Plus with Premier Lacrosse League. Who is my team? Like, well, I picked the Bengals before the Bengals became the Bengals. Okay, so if you want the underdog, it's the Cannons. Okay. Tell that, me why. That was the, well, that was the team that I played for before I retired, um, you know, right here. Oh, my God. There's FanDuel odds, Paul. Yeah, okay. Look at this. Yes, yeah, yeah, so we're, we're there. And, and now think, we're speaking my language. Talk right. to me. So there you go. The cannons are, what would that be? Oh, this is your cannon. 10 to thing. 1. So they're, they have a new head coach in Brian Holman. They're going to be good this year. And, and they're always, you know, when you have an eight-team league, you know, everyone's sort of in the mix. And seven of our eight teams make the playoffs, kind uh -huh. of like the NBA. Every, everyone gets in just about. I love that. And then you can, uh, you know, stir it up and, and make the best. So the cannons. And you were a cannon. I was a cannon, yeah. So you brought me a gift. I brought you a gift. <laughs> I also, I also like brought you a from, lacrosse helmet. I don't even know how to literally, like, literally, I don't know what to do with this. I don't even know how to hold it. It seemed very natural right out of the gates. You were already twirling it. We're, we're basically... This we're, really. we're basically a part of the baton team, uh, cross players. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that's, right. what, that's what I figured. Okay, yeah. but listen, Belichick, uh, we were just talking to Gronk about how he always brings in these guys, this Doc's Aitken guy, which is the most lacrosse name ever. He was it's invited I think by it's New tough. England. Yeah. To, really? <laughs> it is? I'm not saying it's tough. Well, listen, yeah. I, don't, I don't think you heard because you were getting mic'd up. Gronk said... 
Belichick's obsessed with it because it's toughness. Yeah. Because it's, and I'm like, wow, that's a football player who basically had every injury possible, played as hard as he could, guys draped on his legs, he's ruining his knees, running up and down the field, and he's saying, like, man, man this is tough. Like, I'm thinking rugby, I'm thinking football. Yeah. Like, I don't necessarily look at, think of lacrosse. I think a little East Coast. I think a little right. Ivy League. I, I don't think, when I found out Sam Hubbard played, I was like, what? So talk to me about the toughness of the sport. Well, you can hit each other with a stick. Like actually so, each other? Mm. Like American Gladiators. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and, and actually lacrosse got its first bump in America on American Pie. If you remember, yeah, Stifler. They were all playing. He was a lacrosse guy. I think that's tough. literally my introduction to right. lacrosse. Was that? Yeah, that he, and Mean Girls and Rachel McAdams was also tough. Yeah, and, yeah. They were, that was when lacrosse yeah. was at its rise, and then it dipped. But and then did we they help the more than it hurt? Because now you have to like go back and redo like the well, PR. It was thing actually Stifler. pretty great in America. Well, Stifler, but Oz was the captain yes, that's what I meant. and yeah, the yeah, guy yeah, yeah. that everyone ultimately wanted to be. He was the payoff, wasn't he? Did you want to play play lacrosse because of because that? of Oz? Yeah. Is it? No, no. Is that true? <laughs> I think that's great if that's true. That's amazing. The, the power of movies. Um, so it's tough because one, it, it's again, it's it's the Native American game. It was played for the creator. It was played without rules, and and you have one ball, and everyone has their sticks, and it's kind of like no holds bar. And I think what Bill really likes is the speed, the agility, the free flowing, the toughness, as he said. Um, there's not a sport where you really get cross-checked in precarious positions and have to build sort of strength and explosiveness and soft tissue, yeah. which is where all of the injuries are nowadays in, in the NFL. And then he tested that with Chris Hogan, who won three Super Bowls with him. And then we got Chris back into the PLL. Oh, he's there. Because he was a f all American at Penn State. Oh, what an athlete he is. But there was a guy who got uh, uh, a Falcon for a minute, made the roster, now you got this Docs guy. You talked to Belichick. Yeah. Is that weird? Because you want guys in your league, yeah. but Belichick is doing his Belichick-y stuff and trying yeah. to take guys from you. Yeah, he is. I know, it's, it's, a, it's very awkward between us <laughs> right now. Uh, Why? <laughs> because he has to do what's best for his business. And you know, when he takes on a lacrosse player- It's, it's good for you. It, it, it's good for us, but yeah. I also love Docs to play in the PLO because he's an amazing athlete. Um, Sam Hubbard, you talked about. We think about you know Jared Bernhardt for the Falcons. He he was yes. the best player in college lacrosse. I love him in the league. You even have Pat Spencer, who's in the G League right now, but almost made the Warriors. He was the Tourton, one of the best player in college lacrosse, now in the NBA. And so these athletes are amazing. It's, and that goes back to your point around, you know, who are these players in the sport? How do we celebrate them? How do we storytell around them? How do we put it in the media? But we have some of the best athletes in the world. And so, yeah, I think that in the short term, Doc's playing for the Pats or Chris Hogan or Sam Hubbard and us being able to talk about that maybe changes the perception. Yeah. I think it's soccer. It's a good PR bump. It's a good story. We talk about it yeah. a lot, but then you want these guys. So it's very funny that it's you versus, I mean, literally nobody wants to argue with Belichick over anything. And like, you're probably like, I mean, how do you compete with the NFL? The, Tell, the other thing, I mean, how? Right? Well, so well, I was going to say, so like, every league to, to bust through has some type of stereotype, right? So soccer yes, for Don Garber 20 years ago was the guys who got cut from the basketball football team. And he needed to totally. illustrate that soccer players in America were as good as soccer players overseas. UFC was basically uh, uh, Shinnecock League fighting. Oh my God, I can't believe you said I'd listen to that. I was supposed to say <laughs> cock fighting. I would never say. But I, I think it was it's Shinnecock it's like people golf who have course, to, It's right? like reporters who have to say slipped disc, and then they say but the wrong thing, and then it's like a whole no one internet wanted to bot. touch the Didn't UFC. Didn't do it. No one wanted to touch the UFC because yeah. it was uh, so dangerous, right. and it was this blood sport, and then right. they shifted that perception in a way that, to, that made it safe enough to invest, not to mega multi-billion dollar league. So ours might be, you know, sort of the diversity angle or the prep school or the Ivy League, as you'd said, and we're hammering it. And, yeah, you want to make it available to as many people as possible, and it is growing as it, of course, is ABC's not putting this on ABC proper if they're not super interested, yeah. and I'm super interested, so you and I are going to, God damn it, we're going to do we're, something, we're going to get lacrosse Are we allowed to say that? This. Literally, somebody's dropped just, an iPhone. Yeah, if I get dinged open. for what I just said, I'd quit. I'm out because <laughs> you just, everyone's just dropping. I brought tennis balls so we don't have as hard of balls. Don't mention balls now. Go to the break. It's super oh, different. Get in on the NBA playoff action right now. Uh, from the first tip with FanDuel, right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet of up to $1,000, $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, there's no better place to bet on all the playoff action in America's number one sports book. Hit up Chandler Parsons on Twitter for tips, guys, and download 
Spandle Sportsbook today. We'll be back with, uh, speaking of basketball, LeBron of lacrosse. Because there's nothing on there. The prompter's not on, so I don't know how to do that. Uh, I'm here with LeBron James of lacrosse. As our studio is literally falling apart today, guys. But that doesn't matter because we've got the sticks and the cradles and yes. the silver spoon. It, exactly that. I'm going to teach you how to cradle and shoot. Yeah, let's do that. And then I think we have something over here. Okay, right? let's do that. We only have three minutes left, so teach okay, me. Okay, all right. So ball and stick. But this is not the ball, the proper ball, right? They're no, we just brought worried softballs because you were equipment from 1929. You were originally going to go in the net, and then we ran out of time. Coincidentally. I'll go in the net. I'm not afraid of you. What do you got? we ran out of time. Shoot. No, no, no. You're not getting out of this what demo. It, can you just do, like, right there? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, God, I don't trust you at all. Do that but, again. Okay. Do right there. Okay, that's actually terrifying. I'm not okay. doing that. All right, teach me. So, so our lacrosse balls are actually much harder than this. They're, they're dense and I'm a full lefty. rubber. So we brought in tennis balls for safety on set. Anyway, so you have the ball on your stick, and I would just cradle. It's just a little wrist action like that. Yeah, there you go. Like this? Yeah, that's but I'm it. Left, like this way? Now you're a player. Yeah. That's right. Take okay. that, Matt Rambo. And then to shoot... <laughs> <laughs> to shoot, take your top hand, hand down, just like this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like a. a exactly. <laughs> that's Boom. so. That's like See, so athletic. It, it, it's just something yeah. that it, it works on its own. You sort of know. You get a, a, a stick and ball, and then you all of a sudden shoot. Okay, let's do these. This is, here's some. Here's some crazy names my producers came up with, and we're gonna see what they are. Um, okay, around the world. Okay. I think around. No, don't tell me now. Okay, I think okay. around the world is when you like have the ball in here, and then you're like, woo. And then do that. What that's is it, it well, really? That's exactly what it is. So, so we have an overhand shot, a behind the back, and then an around the world is like that. <laughs> you you so. were this far, this this close to hitting me in the face, and that would have been such good television. Oh my god. Oh man. Okay, let's see. How about a worm burner? Okay, so a worm burner. This is also very stereotypical lacrosse. What what we're getting right now. I okay, think I'm I, sorry. I saw it yet, yeah, but that's okay. Oh no, we're trying to we're trying to rage <laughs> against that machine. <laughs> All right, okay, so worm sorry. burner is when you shoot the ball low to low and you sort of skid it off the turf and it goes in the, the net. The speed at which this is happening is wild to me. This I is slow, okay. That. Okay, really hit it. Give me, okay, okay, big boy, okay, hit wanna, it. Really, yeah. no, right. I'm not, yeah. Only if, only if you do it as well. Okay, sure, well, I'll do, okay. I'll do it uh, before you so right. I'm not now, super Brandon, embarrassed. I've been retired Take for two this, years. Take this, get rid of so your I'm tropes, gonna... your peanut butter and your top cheese cheddar twizzlers. Okay, we're gonna cradle. All right, you're gonna let it go cradle. for I like to do a little dance when I cradle. Okay, right. Bam. There you go. All right, go, whip it, go, kill it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> so Check out PLL, Jail June 7th, June 3rd! We're gonna get you all the info.